So we have uh, now Sally Ivans. Uh, Sally is communications manager at Animal Equality UK, where she has been working for two and a half years. Prior to this, she worked in social media marketing for a large charity in the cultural sector. She has an MSc degree in ecology. Sorry <laughs> for my English. <laughs> so, right. Sally, welcome, and you, you can have your time now. Great, thanks so much, Monica, and thank you everyone for joining. Um, yeah, as Monica said, I'm the communications manager at Animal Equality UK. So I manage our social media marketing, amongst other things. Um, previously worked in social media for Heritage Charity, and then before that I did a master's in ecology, which I studied because I've always loved animals and the environment. Um, I've been vegan for about four years now. And at Animal Equality, we focus our work on farmed animals, as I'm sure you're all aware, because um, they just suffer so extremely and in such staggeringly high numbers. Uh, we're also an effective altruist organisation, which means we strive to be as effective as possible with all aspects of our work. And this leads quite nicely on to what I'm going to be talking about today, which is social media advertising. Um, I have about five years experience now running um, ad campaigns on social media and what I've learned is just it's so crucial to make sure your ads are as effective as possible, especially in non-profit organisations um, and continually working on analysing them and making sure their performance is really working for you. Um, and it is worth noting as well that the most effective ad on social media might not always be the cheapest, but it's what's the most valuable to your organisation. Uh, so we'll get into it. Oh, there. Oh, there you go. Uh, so why might you want to run social media ads? So there's a lot of different reasons. You might be wanting to reach new and specific audiences. You might want to connect with and engage your potential supporters. Um, you might want to drive a lot of traffic to your website to help people learn about the issues you're campaigning on. You might want to raise your brand awareness and you also just might want to spread the word about all the amazing work for animals that you're doing. Um, so in terms of ad platforms, I'm going to focus today on the Facebook ads platform. Um, it's a really great place to start. You can manage both Facebook and Instagram ads from here. It's relatively cheap to advertise on the platform compared to some other social media channels. Um, and the real big advantage is there are billions of monthly users on these platforms. So you'll definitely never run out to people to advertise to. Um, and there's also detailed targeting options to enable you to reach really niche audiences. So I think if you're new or even seasoned at social media advertising, Facebook ads platform is kind of where you want to be. So before you get started or you want to rejig your ads, I think it's really important to just take a moment to think, how is your organization currently using social media ads, if at all? Um, if you want to take a moment to kind of think about this and then chat to me at the end as well, that would be great. But um, I think it's so important to just think about what you really want to gain from your ads and why and currently are they working for you so you should have a clear strategy which really fits in with your wider organizational goals and make sure what you're getting is really valuable so you're not just focusing on vanity metrics and what i mean by this is things like impressions and follow account which can be really important and they definitely play their part but there's no use in you running an ad for example that reaches a million people but not one of those people actually stop to read the ad or you get 10,000 followers but then none of those followers actually ever engage with any of your posts so just make sure you have a clear strategy and you're focusing on something if the campaign or content that you want to promote has a lead generation aspect then i would really strongly suggest optimizing your ads for conversions if you're not doing that already and that just means facebook will show your ads to the people most likely to actually take an action on your website such as sign a petition or subscribe to your mailing list rather than just showing it to people who are likely to see it or click on it for example um, not only hopefully are these people are going to be particularly valuable to you because you know that they're willing to actually go the extra mile and do something and take action. Um, optimizing for conversions also gives you a cost per conversion for reporting, um, which is just a really useful and tangible metric you can use to um, analyze your return on the ad spend you're getting. So in terms of strategy, ads should hopefully complement your organic social media content. So if someone saw an ad from you that was completely different to what you post on your normal Facebook channel, um, you want those two to match up really. 
Um, and one good tactic can be to incentivize your lead generation campaigns if possible. So you could offer people a free gift if they sign up to something through your ads, for example. Um, this really doesn't have to be expensive. So a digital ebook can work really well. Um, this on the left here is our Love Veg e-cookbook, which we offer for free to anyone who signs up to our vegan pledge um, online through our ads. And over the past couple of years, we've had over 40,000 people sign up um, to try veganism and reduce or eliminate their animal consumption um, and also get this free ebook. And we've found that it compared to ads that don't offer the the ebook, the ones that do really perform much better. So just giving people a freebie, even if it's um, something that you consider small can be really useful. You could also choose something a bit higher value if the leads are more valuable to you. So um, for example, if you're looking for monthly supporters, you might even want to offer them something physical, like a free gift. So something like a tote bag or a t-shirt that you can send them, which is costing you more on the outset. But if you're likely to get a regular monthly donation, then that could be a useful um, tactic as well. So I'm just going to talk briefly about the Facebook pixel because I'll be mentioning quite a lot. So you might already have this set up or know about it, but it's a short piece of website code, a little bit like a cookie, which basically just collects data and then talks to Facebook so you can use it for advertising. Um, if you don't have it set up, you can find really detailed instructions that just walk you through it on Facebook's help pages. Um, and you can also get a web developer to set it up if they haven't done already. And using the pixel just means that you can, you can do a lot of things actually. So you can create custom conversion events, for example, a petition sign up, and then you can then track those conversions and their costs. So you can run ads that are specifically targeted at people who will sign your petition. Um, you can also build targeted audiences to then reach with your ads and you can also use it to exclude certain groups from your audience. So, for example, if you are running an ad that is asking people to sign a petition and you don't want, obviously, people who've already signed that petition to, um, to see the ad because that would be a waste, you can then exclude people if you're using the Facebook pixel. So it can be really useful. So everything you need before you start running ads, or even if you're just wanting to kind of rejig them a bit, um, you'll obviously need a Facebook page. So, of course, um, but you also don't have to have an Instagram account to run Instagram ads. As long as you have a Facebook page, you can do both. So this is quite useful for really for any organisations who don't have the resource maybe to do two organic social media pages, but still want to take advantage of the audiences on Instagram. Although I would recommend getting an Instagram account if you can. Um, you'll also need time so to set the ads up but also to regularly monitor them so I think it can be quite tempting especially when we're all really busy to just set some ads up put a budget in and leave it for a month and come back at the end of the month and think oh okay you know that did all right but that could have done better um, so it's important to schedule some time and make sure you have enough time to regularly look and check at the performance of your ads. Like I mentioned before, um, it's really important to have a strategy and think about your desired outcome of the ads. And then of course a budget. Um, so if you're unsure, I find it really useful to work backwards uh, sometimes when I'm not sure how much money to spend on an ad. So think about what results you need or want and then look at your typical ad costs if you're already running a lot of ads or you can do some research, there's lots of stuff online. Um, you could talk to your colleagues or people in other organizations and then if you have the kind of average or your estimated cost uh, per result, then you can work out how much you'll need to get your outcome. Um, so you'll also need images or video clips to use. So if you're not the person that's creating those, uh, just make sure you give whoever is a clear brief with exact specifications so that they know they're creating them for an ad. Um, and also, if you're running ads with images, try not to make try to make sure there's not too much text on the image because that can get um, rejected by Facebook. So, just um, standard images work well, maybe with a logo or a little bit of text in the corner. And video works really well as well. So, like with um, video on organic social media, it works really well for ads. Um, then this depends on your ad, but usually in a lot of cases, you'll want a web page to direct to. So just make sure that that has a good user experience, that it's responsive and um, for mobile, because a lot of people will be using mobile when they see the social media ads. 
And then also if you're using the Facebook pixel, just make sure it's mentioned in your privacy policy and or your cookie policy. And you can get that checked over by a legal professional. But um, it's the case in the UK that you have to mention it and just make it clear that that is a cookie that's on your website. So just double check that that's all set up properly. And then you can get started. So you just need to head to facebook.com forward slash ads manager. Um, using ads manager directly gives you a lot more options and control over your ads than um, boosting posts directly from your Facebook page, which you may have done before. Um, so yeah, I'd suggest using the ads manager dashboard whenever you can rather than your Facebook page itself. Uh, you will need to set up an ads manager account and just go through the steps if your organization doesn't already have one. Um, it's relatively simple. You'll just link it to your Facebook page and then add payment details and then you're ready to start creating your ads. Um, so when you create a new ad campaign, the first thing you'll need to do is select your campaign objective from the list of options on the left here, you can see those. So keep your strategy and your overall goals in mind. Uh, you might want as many people as possible to watch your video and see the truth about something, or you might want people to visit a web page where they can learn more and sign up to a pledge. Um, in the example here, I've clicked conversions. Um, so this is just Facebook's going to show my ads to people who are more likely to take those valuable actions on my website. Um, and you can also A-B test on, um, on Facebook. So this is a great way to learn what works for your ads. Um, and Facebook basically will split your budget equally between the different options that you've set up. And then you can find out which one performs best. So it's really useful for testing if you want to test some different images or test what type of ad copy works best for you. Um, but you'll need to set it up here. And then after you've published your campaign, you can go back and add the variants easily. And then this is also where you'll select your budget and your bid strategy, and then you can add a schedule if needed. So, um, for example, if you only want your ads to run in daytime or on weekdays, you can do that here. Uh, if you want to optimize your app for conversions, the next thing you'll see is this and you'll need to select the relevant conversion event, which will have been set up. So you can set these up and create your own custom events using the pixel helper tool. Um, and Facebook make it really easy actually to set these up on pages, even if you don't have a web developer or access to the code, you can still do it. So um, it's really accessible. In this example, we're gonna optimize our ads for signups to the email newsletter. And you can see this green dot on the side. And that just means that Facebook has checked and the ad is all, the pixel event is all working correctly and set up on your website. So if that's red, um, you'll need to go and check the pixel code. So um, when you're picking your audience, you can select really detailed targeting. So that allows you to include or exclude people with certain interests. Um, you can click the browse, um, the browse section down there and just um, select lots of different demographics or behaviors or interests. So you can see here, I've picked animal rights, plant-based diets and veganism. So Facebook will serve my ads to anyone who's interested in those. And then you can exclude people as well. Um, and you can see the little barometer at the top um, and you basically want that to be in the green zone. So you don't want to be too specific where Facebook can't find enough people to serve your ads to. And you don't want to be too broad where it's going to show it to people who just aren't interested. Um, and then there's also at the very bottom here, the targeting expansion checkbox. So if your audience is quite small, so in that red section or even just nearing that red section, it's worth uh, selecting this checkbox. And it just means that Facebook will expand your interests or the interests of the audience um, outside what you've picked, but still um, optimizing for conversions. So it will just allow you to reach more people. And then directly after this, um, you'll just need to select your ad placement. So that's where you want them to appear. Um, that will vary based on your goals and the content you have. I think if you're unsure, it's a good idea to just start with people's social media feeds um, where you'll have seen ads before and maybe on stories too, where you're a bit kind of, you'll, you'll hopefully know what, what they'll look like. Um, and if you only want to run your ad on either Facebook or Instagram, but not both, um, this is where you'll need to specify that too. With custom audiences, um, it's just what Facebook calls um, a group of people and you can create them using the Facebook pixel. So this allows you to reach or exclude, like we've talked about, an audience that's interacted with your organization's website before. Um, 
So they might have just visited your website, they might have signed up to something, they might have spent a lot of time on your website, they might have um, even gone through and donated on your website and you can reach those people again. Um, and there's also some other options for custom audiences. So you can um, reach people who've interacted with your social media accounts before. You can upload your own data set if you want, which then gets encrypted. Um, but the Facebook pixel is a really easy way to create custom audiences. And you can then use them to create lookalike audiences too. And this is where Facebook will create an audience of people who are similar to people in your custom audiences. So for example, you could create a custom audience of people in your newsletter list um, or people who've signed up to your newsletter in the last month, then create a lookalike audience and target those. And those people will hopefully be very similar to the people who have signed up. So you'll be getting more leads and it can help with your conversions. Also remarket um, using these custom audiences. So this just allows you to reach people who have interacted with your organization in some way and just target them again, um, which can increase supporter retention and loyalty. It can create, increase your ad conversions and it can just help to re-engage supporters with your work as well. And again, with the custom audiences feature, you can just remarket content to those people really easily. Um, you can get really specific when you're doing this. So for example, here, this audience would be visitors to a website who in the past 30 days have spent more time than average on any page on the website than other people have, and also visited a campaign page, but who haven't signed the petition on that campaign page. So you can get really specific. So these people theoretically should be really interested in you and your work and they've seen your campaign page but ha perhaps they didn't just make the final step of signing the petition maybe they got distracted or they didn't have enough time um, so you can just gently remarket and add to them and just say um, you know remind them of that petition and hopefully then you will get more leads from that um, so the options are really endless here so just some ideas you could use this for so you could run ads to people who visited a specific web page but who didn't take the conversion action like i just mentioned maybe you want to target people who've read one of your blogs about a specific issue but you have a related petition that they could sign and they haven't yet signed that um, maybe people who used to visit your website you know really regularly but for the past month they haven't been on your website or newsletter subscribers who aren't following your Facebook page and you want them to be following you on both channels. Um, yes, yeah, so there are definitely a lot of options. So after selecting your audience, you can build your ads. Um, this is pretty simple. So I don't have a screenshot, but you just write your text and upload your images and video. Um, you can set up multiple ads under the same ad campaign. So you can try out different images or videos or different texts. Um, and there's also an option called dynamic creative, which is really useful. And this just allows you to enter multiple options. So it's up to 10 or 20 in some cases for different ad components. So you could enter 10 um, images that you want your ads to run with 10 headlines, 10 description texts, lots of different options. And then Facebook will automatically mix these and create different combinations of ads and then optimize those to the people who are most likely to interact with each one. And then this is a slightly different way of testing as well, but it does allow you to look and see which is doing best. Um, so there's some learnings you can get there as well, but this is super useful if you're short on time and you want to set up ads with lots of different images um, and have a lot of variety in your ads, but you just don't have the time to sit there and create each one uh, manually. It's really useful. Um, generally, ads should be clear and concise. Um, you have just a few seconds to capture someone's attention. That person may have never heard of your organization before, and then you'll probably need them to persuade, persuade them to take some sort of action as well. So it should be short and snappy if you can, um, even more so than with organic social media posts. Uh, try and put the emphasis on your audience as well and how they can help um, rather than talking about your work. So saying things like you have the power to do this or um, we need you and your help rather than, for example, animal equality has done this. Um, that really works well. Creating urgency as well, um, I found really works. Um, so if you have a time frame and you can say, you know, this is urgent, we need X number of names on our petition by this date um, and just using capitals and trying to create a little bit of urgency so people really feel like they have to take action. 
And then of course use really powerful and emotive images or video footage if you can. You want to be drawing people in, you want them to be eye-catching. Um, just watch out on that point as well for some ads not being approved by Facebook. So this can happen occasionally uh, for nonprofit organisations like us. If you're trying to run ads with images or footage of animal cr cruelty, even if you wouldn't consider the content particularly graphic, um, often they may get rejected or just disapproved either by the algorithm or someone actually just sat at Facebook that thinks, you know, that's a bit too shocking for our audience. Um, if this happens, you can appeal the decision or you can just try another image. Um, I've had success where I've tried other images that I think are, you know, equally, not, not too graphic, but equally as kind of shocking and one has worked and one hasn't. So you can just try something else. Um, if it keeps happening to you, then it is worth mixing things up um, and maybe trying to slot a bit of content in there, which you know will get approved. So something with like a happy picture of an animal, just to show Facebook that you're running that type of ads as well. Um, but fingers crossed that won't happen, but just good to mention. Uh, so this is just an example of an ad that's working well for us at the moment. Um, so it's an ad for our current foie gras ban petition. Um, and the cost per conversion on this at the moment is seven pence per petition sign, um, which isn't the lowest we've ever had, but it's one of the lowest um, we've ever had. So it's doing really well. We're really pleased at the moment. Um, and some of the reasons this might be doing well, um, it's quite short and simple and it's clear what we're asking people to do. Um, I think the image is particularly strong. It's quite eye catching. You've got that duck's, uh, that goose's eye staring straight at you, um, which draws people in. Uh, we've also got urgent at the bottom, which is trying to create that sense of urgency. And then we're referencing the viewer as well by saying animals need you. Um, and yeah, this is um, an ad that's doing particularly well for us at the moment. So I think those things may be playing a part. As in terms of when it comes to tracking, on Ads Manager, if you go on, you'll be able to see major metrics in a table at a glance on the first homepage. So you'll be able to see things like results, your cost per result, your reach and your video views. Um, there's also a plus button at the top right of the table in Ads Manager, and that lets you add loads of other metrics to the table. So if you are interested, check out that because there's a lot, a lot of um, data that you can capture. To get some just kind of easily visual um, graphs, you can click view charts as well, which is under the name of each campaign to view some graphs. Um, so for example, the top one here is just showing reach and conversions split by the two genders that Facebook has available and also by age range. Um, it's worth noting this is usually skewed towards women over around 45 because they're Facebook's most active users but it's still quite useful because you can see your kind of cost per result of each kind of different target audience. And then at the bottom as well, you can just see the change in your conversions and cost over time. Um, so if you don't have loads of time to like really delve into the data, but you just want a quick overview, these can be quite useful. Um, so if your ad was optimised for conversions, you'll be able to see how many you received and you'll also be able to see the cost per result in this table. So that's what's really useful about optimising for conversions. So you don't just know how much your clicks were costing or your impressions costing. You actually know how much that person taking an action and hopefully getting something, you're getting something valuable out of that. Um, you're knowing how much that will cost. And then you can also see your ad relevance rankings. So you'll need to click that plus button to add these three in. Um, and the metrics are called engagement rate ranking, conversion rate ranking, and quality ranking. Um, these are really useful because they show how well your ads are resonating with your audience. So if your ad isn't doing that well and you're not sure why, if you check these out, and for example, one of them says below average, then that may be the reason and you may want to go in and edit your audience or your targeting. Um, these have replaced the old metric, which was called relevance score, which was Facebook's way of ranking the relevance of an ad from one to 10. Um, but now you'll see these three and you'll see whether you're above, below or on average. Um, it's also worth mentioning that ad cost really varies between countries. 
Um, so the cost generally of, ad of Facebook advertising is really different between countries. So, for example, in the UK, I think the average is usually reported at 75 pence per click. Um, if you're using proper targeting and checking in on your ads, you should see click costs um, much lower than that. But they do really vary between countries. So it's worth doing a little bit of research if you can. And cost per conversions vary. Um, and can actually just depend on how much effort they require people to take. So, for example, we regularly see cost per conversions of around five to 15 pence per petition sign up um, because that's something that people want to take action. Signing petitions relatively easy um, and it helps them feel like they're doing something and make a difference, which they are. Um, but then we'll see higher cost per conversions for other things. So, for example, uh, for a sign up to our activist network, we'll usually see a cost per conversion of around 50p to one pound, um, which is a little bit higher because we're asking people to sign up to receive emails that then give them lots of actions and they're receiving like two emails a week. So it's a bit of a kind of harder ask for people. And then we'll also see cost per conversions of up to several pounds for donations because people obviously, if they're having to donate, that's quite a lot of effort and um, you know, money on their part as well. And then finally, just talking about continuing the supporter journey. So your supporters journey really shouldn't end with Facebook ads, even if they have taken that action that you wanted them to take. Um, so just think about what's happening to these people after they've engaged with your Facebook ad. So you can use remarketing, uh, like I previously mentioned. So if people have signed a petition or shown interest in a specific issue, you can serve similar content to them uh, by retargeting them with ads in the future um, that they might be interested in. And then if you've been running lead generation ads, make sure you think about the journey that you're directing people to sign up to. Um, so I assume they are in most cases, but are they getting a custom thank you email about the action they've taken? Um, could you then segment them out on your email list and send them updates or specific content about what they've actually helped you achieve through taking that specific action? Um, you might want to send them on a custom email journey to warm them up, maybe to becoming a volunteer or even a regular donor. And it just it's really important to think long term and consider how you want your new leads to be interacting with your organisation in a few months time or even a few years time. And that's it. But if anyone has any questions, uh, I, or just actually, if you just want to share anything your organisations found with social media advertising or anything you're doing that um, you want to have a chat about, that would be great. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. And we have some uh, questions. Yeah. So we have question. Uh, if you're new to trying ads, what sort of budget do you recommend experimenting with? Sorry, what was the first part of that question? I missed it. If you're new to trying ads, yeah. what sort of budget? Um, well, it of course depends on, on your organisation and how much money um, you're kind of wanting to put behind them. But what I would say is you can get good results from quite a small budget on Facebook. Um, and Instagram so I would advise definitely starting small um, set your budget at something you know even like 50 pounds um, but then make sure you're just running that for say a short period of time a week um, and basically just see how that goes um, see if it's doing better or less or not as good as you thought it was um, and then optimize it from there and then if you think it's worth spending more and more money but i think you can you could definitely start small um if you're looking for conversions i would say um if you've never run ads before um and the conversions are for something like signing to a petition or signing up to a newsletter i would imagine you'd be spending or you should think about you'll be spending around a pound so that's in um British pounds, but around a pound per conversion. Donations will be a lot more. Um, hopefully per a petition, you'll see less than that. But I think it's important to think, um, you know, kind of realistically when you're starting. Um, yeah. Yeah. And another one is from Lauren. How often do you recommend using paid ads compared 
to organic content, would you do so mainly to get the new audiences involved in campaigns or for clear CTS? Uh, sorry, so that's how often you'd suggest running paid ads um, in Compared a to our organic content. Uh, okay, um, so with paid ads, um, it, it depends on what you're trying to achieve, um, but we're usually always running paid ads on at least Facebook, um, so throughout every month, um, so most days. Um, we often, or I often do, is um, for certain ads, I will exclude the people who already like our Facebook page from seeing those ads. Because if it's something we're posting about a lot, so like a big campaign we've got or a big petition, um, although not everyone who likes your Facebook page will see your organic content, it's likely that they might see at least one post from you about that. So what I often do is exclude the people who do like our page. So um, the ads are being served to completely new audiences, um, but then hopefully we'll be bringing them in and they'll follow our, our page organically as well. And sorry, was there a second part to that question? Yeah, I will try to, uh, yes, here it is. Uh, the second part is, would you, would you do so mainly to get new audiences involved in campaigns or for clear, clear CTAs? Um, yeah, I think, so in terms of new audiences, um, with a lot of our ads, it does depend on what we're running them for. So a lot of the time we'll be targeting relatively similar audiences. So people who are interested in animal welfare or animal rights or interested in plant-based eating. Um, but there are so many um, users on Facebook that usually you won't be reaching the same people all the time over and over. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to try and reach slightly new audiences if you can as well. Obviously the broader you get out, then the more expensive your ads may be likely to become because it's people who are less interested in the niches that you would, you, you'd normally be posting about. Um, but yeah, I think, I think a mix of both, but usually I would stick to um, if, I think I would just think about my actual goal for the campaign. So if it's newsletter subscribers that I really want, um, I obviously want to reach new audiences who haven't heard of animal equality before, but who are interested in things about our work. But if I want petition signatures and we really need an, a certain number of petition signatures, I might target our current audiences or cu audiences that are, new, um, are known to us because I know that they're likely to sign those petitions. If that answers the question. I think yeah. Uh, we have another one from Ula. Oh, what is your recommended monthly budget for Facebook ads for a medium-sized organization? Um, this is a really difficult one. I think um, it goes back to what I'm saying, which I know is um, not the probably not the answer you're looking for, but just think about how many, like how many results you want. So think about your budget and the best use of that budget, and will that be spending money on Facebook ads? Do you want, for example, a thousand conversions a month? If those conversions are going to cost you a pound, then that's a large budget. But if those people are worth it to you, and if you can send them on a really good user journey, that then hopefully means that you will recoup that value because they'll be really engaged and support your work, maybe make a donation or keep signing petitions and taking actions, then they might be worth that. Um, money to you but yeah and again I think just start small so even if you have a really large budget if you're completely new to Facebook ads you know maybe for the first month you just want to start small with like a quarter of the budget you were thinking of see how they perform and see how you can optimize them as well and how you can get them down to the lowest cost possible um, and then start to increase your budget thank you if every, anyone have some question, please use Slido. If you want to know something about Facebook. Um, my email, I think the slides have gone, but my email was on the last slide and it's just sally i at animalequality.org.uk as well. So if you have any specific questions or things that would be easier to ask over email, feel free to reach out and I'm happy to help always. 
Thank you very much. It's so it's so big, uh, big information <laughs> about Facebook <laughs> ads and everything. It's never ending story. <laughs> I know it's always changing as well. So you know, yeah. just every month I'll go and I'll be like, oh, Facebook ads has changed again. I have to relearn like half of it, but uh, it's never boring, I guess. Yeah, and uh, uh, we had um, uh, also um, a little bit uh, lessons from our. Uh, our Martin and Humani Pokrok uh, about this and uh, uh, I try to to go for them uh, again and again and every time I learn something new yeah. because there is this, there is this uh, and it's a okay, never ending story and also uh, I want to ask something but I don't know if I remember it it's about uh, audiences mm -hmm. and when you when you make some uh, 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 when you make some ad uh, you can create uh, one ad uh, for um, as many audiences as possible I don't know which um, and this is testing it's it's also this testing is also helps uh, people uh, in organizations how to I don't know how how to do the ads because mm -hmm. no it's some sometimes uh, no sometimes something it's not working uh, but uh, you you would uh, tell that this this will be working or but it's not yeah so um the way uh, the way facebook structures is you have your campaign and then your audiences and then your ads um, the audiences are called ad sets, but it's basically audience. So you can create one overarching campaign um, and then in ads manager, you can create as many audiences as you want, but you'll need to create a different audience set for that campaign if you want to target them differently, basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And then under those campaigns, you add your different ads. Um, so it's kind of a three structured system, but you can duplicate them. Um, so there's ways to make it a little bit quicker to set up. And yeah, I think if something's going wrong and you're not sure, um, it's worth seeing if you can find someone who knows about Facebook ads to speak to. I think even if it's just, um, you know, messaging someone on LinkedIn or you can email me um, or there's lots of people who do um, paid social advertising completely full time. So it's worth, I think, reaching out if you can to someone. Um, also looking at the the detailed metrics and seeing about those um, quality rankings and if they say they're below average it just probably means the most likely thing is that your audience is too broad um, mm -hmm. you need to narrow your audience down um, to people who you know will be really interested um, so for example if your audience is like people who are interested in food there's probably going to be too wide um, you're going to be showing your ads to way too many people and they're not going to be engaging with it. So that's why it won't be doing so well. Yeah, it will be expensive too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's why it's also important to keep an eye on them so often just in case, because if something goes wrong or if it's not, um, if it's not working too much and it can be quite expensive, you can, you can set a budget cap and a limit, which is useful to make sure that you don't spend hundreds mm -hmm. of pounds uh, but it's definitely worth checking in and just making sure you're not spending too much money for what you're getting. Yeah, somebody just asked uh, in this chat, in Zoom, can you send your email here? Yes, sure. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Okay, um, there's any questions for Sally? Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so I I think uh, every uh, every question was answered. So maybe can we go for a coffee break or something and. We will see each other in discussion rooms. There are eight of them. And we will see.
there. And thank you, Sally, for your presentation. It's